Hello there. Today I'm taking a look at a wine from Slovenia. It's from a producer called Marian Simčić. And the Marian Simčić winery, very well known winery. This is their Pinot Grigio. It's made in a style called Romato. This is from their crew selection and it's the 2022 vintage of that. So this small family owned winery is probably one of Slovenia's leading wine producers. Marian himself is, I believe, the fifth generation of his family to run the estate. It was founded in 1860 by Josef Simšić, and they're, they're very fortunate to have some quite old portions of vines. Their oldest vines are a, a block of 90-year-old Sauvignon Ver, I believe it is. Marian took over the running of the, the estate in 2008 from his father and is joined there by his wife Valeria. The Burda region where they are is actually a continuation of the North Italian region of Collio in Friuli, Venezia, Giulia. The two regions were one prior to border changes that followed the Second World War. As a result, the winery actually have quite a large proportion of their 18 hectares in Italy. Fortunately, it's an open border and they're easily accessible. The soil types here are quite various and there's the, you know, these are low rolling hills. Burda means hills in the same way, I guess, as the Italian word collio means hills. So as well as these diverse soil types, you also have quite a number of different exposures. As a result of this, they have numerous microclimates and are able to grow quite a large number of grape varieties. So for instance, they grow Ribola, Sauvignon Blanc, Sauvignon Vert, Pinot Grigio, Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and they also produce a Merlot. Their production is divided into three ranges. They have a, a, a Burda classic range of varietal wines. They have a, a Cru selection of which this is a part in which the wines are from individual identifiable crews, or it might be a blend of two crews or something like that. And then the top range is, is the Opoka crew selection, and Opoka is a, a local sort of soft crumbly stone, I guess a mudstone or a sandstone or something like that, that produces quite friable topsoils as it breaks down. But it tends to be that the best crews are on this Opoka soil. Now this particular wine, as I say, is, is from the crew range. The crew is given as Ronk Zegler, and in brackets after that it says IT, so I'm assuming that's a crew that's actually in Italy. Fine age here is given as 45 years, and as I mentioned earlier, the wine is classified as a Romato, and Romato in translation means copper. It's a, it's a fairly traditional northern Italian and for this part of Slovenia way of producing Pinot Grigio. It's, I guess it's, it's, a, it's akin to being an orange wine. It's a stained wine, so it's not quite rosé in colour, but it, it does have a, a delicate sort of coppery pink. Winemaking here is done with great care. Everything is hand-picked. The crushed fruit macerates for four days in large oak casks to two and a half hectolitres, and fermentation is done entirely with indigenous microflora with, with the native yeasts. Pressing after the four days is done very gently with a pneumatic press and once fermentation is complete the wine ages for 12 months in these large old oak vats with the yeast lees to give to feed the wine to give it a bit of richness and roundness. So the wine stays in the vat for a year it's then bottled and is rested for a further four, four months. So this was bottled in December 2023 and will only have been released in April of this year 2024. So a freshly released wine. So let's see what we make of it shall we? I mean first there's a really beautiful colour there. It is coppery, it's almost sort of a salmony colour. There's a, there's a hint of pink as well as the orange note to it. And this is because Pinot Gris is a, is a grape variety that can have quite a dark colour. I mean, there's, the skins of the grapes for this are actually quite a red colour. Swelling it, the wine has 13.5% alcohol, and it's leaving some fairly generous tears on the side of the glass there. Let's see what we make of the aromas, shall we? Mm, the, the aromas are powerful. I mean, actually, I could smell them from um, when I was just sort of sitting here with the glass in front of me. There probably wrong to say burnished because really the colour is burnished but it's almost like a sort of a slightly stewed apple slightly sort of overripe apple pear almost touches of floral notes almost touches of sort of bright dried fruit sultana that sort of thing there but there is this sort of lifted quite fresh 
floral aroma there to the perfume. So let's have a taste. On the palate, that's completely dry. And from the four days of maceration, as well as colour, you've also got a texture coming there, a little bit of phenolics. But at the same time, it's not a bitterness, because the wine spelt, spent 12 months with the lees there. So that's giving it a roundness and a richness. And it is almost sort of, there's a caramelised note. So you, you've, you've, you've got that sort of slightly bruised apple note, but it's actually more of a, a, car, a the caramelised notes are almost like a sort of a toffee apple or something like that. There's a richness as well as this slightly developed note. And there really is a richness and a ripeness. And I keep thinking of things like sort of sultanas, candied peel, notes like that. There's a slight spiciness, I suppose that's the texture coming through. The wine's are mid-weight, it's not heavy. And as I say, its structure is completely smooth. There's nice, fresh acidity. You know, it's not sharp, but it, it's keeping the wine fresh. And it's giving lovely, long flavours here. You might say that the style of the wine was quite straightforward, but at the same time, these you know, Grigio flavours that are coming out here are quite complex. I'm getting sort of everything through from floral notes through to rich, ripe, dried fruits. And you can see those notes throughout the palette. So in some ways, it, it, it's quite an impressive simplicity in terms of that everything is so beautifully in balance. The alcohol's certainly not standing out. The acidity is, is doing enough to lift the fruit without being sharp or particularly mineral. And I'm finishing with a sort of a mouth-watering collection of this Pinot Grigio fruit. There's a roundness and a richness, and those flavours are lasting quite nicely. There's almost a sort of as if there's a, a dusting of dried ginger on the finish or something like that. So yes, a wine of lovely purity, lovely balance, good intensity, really very competently made and a very enjoyable drink. Now they do suggest that this wine can age for up to 10 years. I'm unsure about that, but I, I, don't, I don't see why it would have a problem doing that. It's got such lovely balance and a lovely concentration and actually its structure should help with that as well. So thank you very much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed our video. If you have, do please press the like button. If you would like to watch more of our videos, it would be fantastic if you'd subscribe to the channel because we'd love your support. If you have any comments you want to make, please leave those in the box below. I will leave a link amongst the notes to the page for this wine on the Wine Searcher website. So you can find out more about the wine, you can follow that back and find out more about the winery, and also that way you can see pricing and availability in your market. If you have any friends you think might enjoy the video, do please share it with them. But most importantly, do please see if you can make some time and come and join us for another tasting in the very near future, won't you? Thanks again. Bye for now.